So comment below. Do you think ball joint spacers lift your truck? Does the upper ball joint spacer give you any lift? This is a pretty controversial topic and uh, one that we had quite the conversation back when forums were a thing and uh, every once in a while I get into conversation with guys about these. These are the Z85 ball joint spacers that I uh, provide you guys in the coil spring lift. Uh, four bolts for the Z85 two-wheel drive, uh, the Z85 four-wheel drive and the two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive Z71s have three bolts. What's up guys, Kevin with Badline Industries. Today we're going to be talking about the different types of lift kits uh, that we offer and then that are out there in the marketplace for your Chevy Colorado Canyons and H3s. This video will apply to different vehicles, but um, I'm going to specifically be talking about the kits available to the Colorados and Canyons, but the information therein is going to be applicable to a bunch of different types of vehicles, so hope you enjoy. Before I give you guys the answer, let's head out to Ryan's truck and we're going to take a look at his lift kit and how it differs from some of the lift kits that I've got here on the bench. So what is a lift spindle and how does it work? This is a four-wheel drive lift spindle for uh, this GMC Canyon. And uh, we're going to show you guys the difference between a lift spindle that looks like this and a lift spindle that looks like this. So this spindle looks an awful lot like the other one but the relationship between the ball joint tie rod hub and upper ball joint all work differently than the other two wheel drive spindle we just looked at so by dropping the lower control arm mount the hub and the lower ball joint all four inches lower the tie rod and upper ball joint can stay in the stock orientation and everything else gets dropped you guys can see the drop brackets on the front differential here. This is a 5 inch CST lift. Basically you can't get a CV axle through the middle here so it's not compatible with a four wheel drive uh, spindle like the one on Ryan's Canyon. Basically what CST did is they took the ball joints and the tie rod and kept them in the stock location and then just moved the hub down five inches. That's how you get your lift. So the question I get a lot is can I stack lifts? Can I get the subframe lift and then put the two-wheel drive spindles on there. And the answer is no. You can stack lifts and we're going to get into that now. So a lot of what I'm going to talk about will apply to a whole bunch of different vehicles but uh, specifically I want to talk about some of the lift kits that I sell and show you guys the differences and how you can kind of stack them in a way that best suits your desired lift and your budget. These are the Z85 coil spring spacers that I sell. They're a two and a half inch lift, but they only measure about an inch. Because the coil mounts in the middle of the control arm, geometry and, and physics and all that fun stuff cause the uh, lift of the vehicle to be greater than the thickness of the spacer. So to install these, you basically bolt it onto the top of the strut, you cut the uh, bump stop out a little bit, and uh, and get yourself an alignment super easy these differ from the coil spacers that go inside the strut assembly basically these bolts to the top instead of going inside where it's all retained the reason I don't like the ones that are inside is because they tend to cause the ride of the truck to be much more harsh and a, a higher spring rate basically you're taking the available room that that coil used to have to extend and now you're squishing it Whereas, if we put this on top, we're just simply changing the ride height. We're not really changing the characteristics of the shock and strut and coil anymore. We're just changing the ride height. So, pop quiz. Can you stack a torsion bar lift with a coil spring lift? No. They're two completely different styles of suspension. You've got the strut, uh, captive shock and strut uh, style and you've got the torsion bar both uh, control the angle of the lower control arm and where that sits in relationship to the frame. The lift keys are simply re-indexed so that instead of sitting here on the torsion bar when they're installed, they sit here. So as they get cranked, your control arm sits lower. Granted, it's not much if you looked at this versus your stock key, it's not a whole lot. 
I will honestly say I lifted my truck three inches uh, back in the day with these stock torsion keys. I never bought lift keys, but um, having the peace of mind knowing that you've got the proper equipment and the proper angled torsion key for the lift that you want and knowing that if your bars ever sag from use or from age or wear or mileage, you've got the ability to continue to adjust them and get the truck to that ride head that you want. So that's the advantage these keys have over these stock ones. So you can actually stack lifts, not yet, that's stupid. But you put this on top of your coil strut assembly and you replace the knuckle with this guy and you've got seven inches of lift. Pretty sweet. But can you do a lift torsion key or a torsion key lift and a lift spindle? The answer is kind of. As I mentioned a minute ago, you cannot put a CV axle through the ball joint on these lift spindles. It's not physically possible. GM did something really stupid. They offered the Colorado and Canyons in a two wheel drive coil sprung flavor and a torsion bar flavor. No idea why they did that. So technically, my truck still, at this very moment, is a two wheel drive Z71. Well, let's be honest, it's only like a zero wheel drive right now because there's no motor, no drivetrain <laughs> in it at all. But on the sticker, on the RPO code, on the build sheet, it is a two wheel drive Z71 truck. And I actually ran these spindles with a heavy torsion bar crank on my truck. So before I show you guys how I did that, let's go over to the whiteboard and I'll show you just a real quick diagram on suspension geometry and how these different suspension components interact both the two wheel drive and four wheel drive style of lift spindles. So this is my crude drawing of your stock suspension setup you typically see in an IFS fashion. Basically the lower control arm, upper control arm, you've got your stock knuckle, steering rack, frame, all that fun stuff. Um, this is like the Z85 actually mounts to the bottom of the tie rod and what needs to happen is these three lines, these axes between the three of these need to end up at a specific point in space. It's called absolute center. So it's not like if it's 10 inches here, it's 10 inches here, that's not how it works. They actually have to converge at a point in space. Um, I've got another video on my old channel. I might uh, port that into this channel if you guys want to know more about a suspension geometry and how that works. Like normally your your hub would be right there, right? Um, your tire and everything. That's the center the center line of, of where your wheel mounts. Um, the way that the CST works, they literally just rebuilt the spindle and left everything where it was and they mounted the center of the, the, the hub down here. So that's how they achieved the lift. What about the four wheel drive style spindles? What about the uh, kind of rancho style that we looked at initially in this video? Well, effectively, let's see what code I use. They create a new mounting location. The way they get their lift is they actually make the spindle lower as well. So now you've got your lower control arm here and the CV axle now wherever that's coming in can work with that. So the four wheel drive style spindles while they're taller they don't inherently lift from just their height, but it's a relationship between the wheel mounting surface or wheel mounting location, the bearing, the lower ball joint, and how that interacts with all this other stuff. So that's how a four wheel drive, typically how a four wheel drive spindle works. So we're back to the two wheel drive spindle conversation and I wanna to talk to you guys how you can utilize the two wheel drive Z85 style lift spindles on your two wheel drive Z71. It is my opinion, Fabtech, uh, Doche, uh, CST, they all missed out on a part of the market that 
was pretty much my truck. It was a two-wheel drive Z71, and I had to figure out how to lift it higher than what I wanted. Um, yeah, who lifts a two-wheel drive? Uh, me. But um, now you guys can see what I'm doing with my truck, and it's no longer going to be two-wheel drive. So the Z85 tie rod mounts to the bottom of the the mount on the spindle on the knuckle and the Z71 spindle the knuckle actually is a little bit different it's actually a little bit lower because of the the location of the steering rack um, the frames are the cross members are different for where the uh, steering rack mounts so this mount is now different so what we learned is with that Z71 suspension it needs to mount to the top of the kind of tie rod knuckle because um, that's now lower. You guys remember the, the drawing I just did a second ago. Um, the hub location doesn't change. The way that the, the way that the hub mounted was the same way, but the way that GM did the knuckle, the Z71 tie rod mount is different. I'll put a picture up right here and show you guys uh, between the CST Z85 and Z71 spindles uh, kind of side by side when I did that mm, 10 years ago, 9 years ago, 12 years ago, long freaking time ago. So this gets us really close and you can absolutely bolt this in this Z85 lift spindle into your two-wheel drive Z71. You can absolutely do that drive down the road, get it aligned, it'll be really close. The problem is these three, I'm going to kind of jack it up on the drawing here because I don't have space to draw. But basically these no longer draw to that absolute center. So what actually happens is this would need to be lower. This tie rod mount would need to be lower to hit absolute center. So what we learned how to do was by moving the axis, the center of the ball joint, up an inch so that the the uh, upper control arm mounted just a wee bit higher. We pretty much eliminated all bump steer. I ran the CST spindles for about 20,000 miles on my truck. I loved it. Um, I was really hoping to do solid axle one day and then I moved states and got married and bought a house and had a kid and all that fun stuff. So here we are now. This is just a really quick uh, way to show you guys how you can utilize a two-wheel drive coil sprung lift spindle like the CST, like the Fabtech, and make them work for your two-wheel drive Z71. So another way you can lift your truck is by solid axling. Maybe we'll build you guys a, a kit one of these days. I've got a lot of it designed, but um, the complexity of it and everything kind of got expensive. So, so it's not really a bolt-in kit, but you can get a lot of lift from it and a lot of capability by doing so but we've talked about the front lifts we've talked about how you can do the subframe lifts and spindle lifts on the front of the vehicle but what do you do in the back one way you can lift your rear end of your truck is with an leaf. this will increase carrying capacity so it'll increase your spring rate and you need to uh, kind of disassemble your leaf packs and in certain situations you'll need to replace your u-bolts as well so it's kind of uh, laborious and kind of um, complex on how to install it but if you tow or haul it's something that you want to consider when lifting the rear um, like I said it does give you a little bit of lift but it also increases your spring rate so it's a little bit harsher ride if you're unloaded but if you constantly tow or haul say like a dirt bike or a, a snowmobile or a trailer or uh, tools um, an Adelaide is a really good option for you so an easier install is shackles. These will lift your truck um, two to three inches on, on, on our shackles and they replace your stock shackles and move the basically back of the leaf back lower effectively or lifting the truck up accordingly if you want to look at it that way. Um, these don't typically uh, change the ride characteristic too much um, the shackle angle does play a little bit of effect in the ride quality, but um, it'll be just a little bit stiffer. I sell shackles that are adjustable. Basically, if you don't want to lift uh, quite as far 
um, as the two and a half three inches that these offer um, you can bolt the frame side to this uh, middle bolt and they kind of stick up there and they don't stick under the leaf pack and kind of drag or hang if you go off-roading so I send bolts with these um, so for you guys in the rust belt you're welcome um, I've also got links to the bushings and whatnot that you need to uh, replace when uh, you got to cut them off so there's one more way to lift the rear of your truck and we're gonna go under mine and I'll show you what that looks like so the Colorados and Canyons came with the leaf pack under the axle in order to do this kind of lift you would basically need to flip the axle under the leaf pack get different u-bolts and uh, shock tabs drive shaft all that fun stuff so in order to do this you're gonna have to match the front lift so you're not kind of stupid raked basically um, you can use like a coil spacer and spindle or you can get the five inch spindle or like a subframe lift and torsion key crank you can do a whole bunch of stuff but you need five inches of lift up front at least to make it look stock so um, this is a real simple way to do it you will introduce a little bit of axle wrap um, so that's kind of something to be uh, cognizant of obviously with the longer drive shafts and the, now the torque is kind of below your uh, leaf pack but um, an anti-wrap bar is a really great way to uh, mitigate that and uh, those aren't really too hard to build so I'm really hoping that when uh, Ryan's truck kind of need some new tires here hopefully in the next couple months we can uh, really get his truck to where it needs to be um, we'll do a spring over flip on that uh, get him some 35s re-gear drive shafts uh, potentially um, all the, all the things so um, because he's got the ranch lift up front and because um, we've got the ability to spring over the rear we can get him to clear 35s, no problem. Uh, go off-roading, go do whatever he wants to do with that truck and uh, not risk the issues of clearance with the drop cross member uh, quite as much. So I've barely taken it off-road uh, to show you guys like the skid plate that we make, uh, the sway bar disconnect, stuff like that. And I'm hitting rocks left and right on the bottom uh, cross member. So um, hopefully we can kind of fix that clearance issue and uh, lift his truck and get him on 35s and that truck would look perfect. Hopefully that helped you guys out a little bit. Hopefully that showed you guys the differences between the different lift kits and what you can do to your truck to achieve the desired lift you want on the budget you've got. So solid axle, a couple thousand dollars. Uh, spring over, a couple hundred. You know, the shackles and add leaves, maybe a hundred bucks. Front lift, a couple hundred bucks, depending on what you want to do. Uh, lift spindles can be anywhere from, you know, five to a thousand dollars or more. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity to uh, lift your truck in various ways. And I hopefully this video kind of helped uh, demystify some of those confusions. And, and hopefully this video helped you guys out with the complexity of the different lift kits and whatnot. And hopefully that added some clarity to what you guys um, now know about lift kits and what it takes to lift your truck. Thanks for watching.